Now, the rest of the story. Wasn't this just typical? I threw the grain in for them, walked away, called them and yelled and held the bucket up and everything, and they really didn't seem to care until I was heading back over the gate. And then they all decided that, hey, he ended up throwing us our grain. So, if you guys remember a while back, Tim sent us that, um, all well, brain's malfunctioning, I can't remember the name of the stuff now, um, but we got this cotton fibered feed. You can see the cotton fibers in there. I mixed it with some shelled corn, which I had. And the cows are loving it. I'm on the downhill side of what I have left of the stuff, but really good with their coats as far as shining them up. And we went through, Dad actually went through and swapped the cows around for me. The cows were out there, the bulls were in here. And the thing is, it's not a huge pasture. I think it's like one and a half acres, maybe pushing like one and three quarters. And just the four bulls weren't really able to keep it down. Haven't been keeping it down. It's getting ahead of them. So swapped the bulls in, let them eat on that dry hay bale, which believe it or not, we are officially cutting hay. I cut 12 acres last night and I still have four bale, five bales left of hay. So I didn't do too bad this year. So going to keep feeding them as I need to because there's no way that pasture is going to sustain all these cows that are up here. Uh, these three guys, two of them are going out to Ryan's. And once we get the pastures done, because we got to make hay out of my brother's place, there's 15 acres of pasture that needs to be cleaned up. Then we'll let the cows out. Once the, all the cows are out and then the lot, the barnyard clears up. We'll put the cows in out at Ryan, or the bulls in out at Ryan's place, largely just to get them out of here. And wooden fence all around it. We don't have to worry about the bulls, you know, crawling through any fences to get to the cows. Rocky is going to be, you know, put in here to go to work here. June 1st is today. And, hey babe, he's looking pretty awesome. He had a sore foot last fall, but he's doing just fine. I guess he gave dad a run for his money here uh two nights ago when because dad's one went through and switched everybody around i guess uh he made dad chase him out of the pasture um june 1st june 15th i'm actually thinking about pushing it back to june 15th to calve a little bit closer to potentially nicer weather out of dad ryan and i myself i'm actually set up probably the best for having calves in crummy weather i say that because concrete and they're not out in the mud or whatever i'm able to keep them a lot cleaner with you know bedding and everything they don't less likely to go out and lay in the a pile of mud and have a calf and then you know ultimately lose a calf and i think it's healthier for the calves too i mean it's got to be easier on them than 40s 50s 60 degree weather versus the uh uh, sub zero, like what was it, 10 degrees out? Oh, there's the other cow I was waiting on out there. Um, it's not a lot of grain. I'm gonna only be giving them about a bucket, bucket and a half, and keep some tame. A little bit of grain isn't gonna hurt them at all. And I gotta go through and pour them again to clean up some of their coats and get the flies away from them. I mean, the bugs are finally starting to come out in force. <laughs> So everybody that's here, I do know I have some issues as far as who is due when. I really should preg check them. Things slow down here, I will. But between, you know, trying to make first cut, which I abandoned, by the way, after the 12 acres I cut last night, I had 30 acres plus I was going to cut today. They added rain into the forecast. Starting today is Wednesday, they say starting Friday night all the way through till like well all of next week and then starting into that next week there's chances of rain and you can look at me i guess we can't afford ryan can't afford uh to lose any hay so we run the risk of cutting it today trying to get it bailed on time before we get any rain and then what would be absolutely devastating is if we get a bunch on the ground and then it starts raining and then just doesn't stop which is a potential to happen so it's just not worth the risk. So playing keep away right now with the feed. I got the last 
two or three cows coming up. I'm kind of hoping they'll come and clean this up. So otherwise everybody else is going to take it off for themselves. But this 320, I'm actually on the fence about her yet as to whether or not she's going to calve. I mean, she looks no different than the ones that calved, well, that little last red calf. But I do know I had a couple that uh, didn't calve last year. And it's all about feed efficiency. I'm not going to keep a cow around that isn't doing anything for the herd or providing anything other than, you know, a hungry mouth. So, I've said it before, I'll say it a thousand times more, you know, you get the guys that are obviously a little bit more willing to, to risk standing next to me, but um, the cow herd is what I would like to improve the most. He came out of nowhere. Uh, as far as the row crops and, and the hay, the, you know, at least the hay that I sell, um, the cows, maybe I hurt myself buying the older cows, I will admit that. I should have bought some heifers, but I bought quantity over quality. And we got a nice bull. I mean, Rocky's got good genetics behind him. But that doesn't do you a, a lick of good if... Come on, girls! Doesn't do you a lick of good if uh, the cows don't stick. So, come on. Come here. See, she's not like, you know, numb nuts, or what did I call the, the other psycho one? She's a sister, a uh, relative anyway. Um, she's not as bad as her, at least. I can tell just by looking at her. Same mom, different dads. But come on, girls! They're going to miss out on the green all together. Oh, so be it. We got to go through. We still got one, two, three different bed packs. I'm going to end up pushing them up. I'm not don't really have any place to spread them unless we're going to spread it on hay ground real light. If our spreader was set up better, which it's not, I mean, it's it's done so much. It's all so much manure over the years. It's amazing the thing hasn't rattled apart. Oh, wait, it's trying to. Um, my plan is really just push it up, compost it, let it break apart even more. You know, break down the stalks that are there. And I'll probably stir it once or twice throughout the summer, and then sometime this fall we'll haul it all out. I mean, I don't really want to just haul it out on the pasture or haul it out onto hay ground. Hay ground is, is one thing, but just to haul it out on the pasture just to get rid of it. I mean, we bailed that, that corn residue up. I'd like to see it go back to the fields, you know, nutrients and everything. So especially with the way prices are, which we're not going to start talking about prices. I'm going to go up and work in the disc bind for a little bit. It's, it's cool like 60s or so i mean i'm still wearing a sweatshirt for june 1st but we uh we got all the crops up right out of the ground and just seeing what little bit i cut last night i quit because i'm worried that that little like 12 acres or so that i cut last night it's going to be nip tuck trying to get it cut or trying to get it raked and baled on friday am i going to use the new baler probably going to try the only downside is is I don't have that one set up for the hay preservative and if the hay is looking a little on edge iffy I'm gonna use the 566 if I need to put preservative on it but I do want to run a baler to through the new baler the 569 just to make sure that it can actually wrap a bale and work and you know still be in one piece after you drop the bale out the back funny thing I was just told the other day about those bale kickers how some guys they use the bale kicker they'll back up dump the bale out and then the bale kicker will actually push the tractor ahead when it ejects the bale so instead of pushing the bale it's pushing the tractor i'm not buying that if you're using a little rinky dink tractor as one thing or you're holding the clutch in and no brakes as you're dumping it out on a rinky dink tractor but i do not believe that that baler is going to push that that 8235r after dumping a bale out. I mean, my bales, uh, they can vary anywhere from 1,200 pounds up to, like, I think the heaviest I've got was like 1,800. But I don't make big bales. I mean, the big, the biggest I can actually make is like 72 inches, I believe. Uh, I've been making 60-inch bales, large because of logistics. No, not because of logistics. I mean, they stack a little nicer on the wagon, don't get me wrong, but was for weight. Uh, 
the weight of the bales is largely what was controlling what I would actually make size wise and what I was finding last year now that I cleaned the bottom all up there isn't any thatch it's all nice new fresh feed it's all new growth it's new crop um, the thatch is actually what was adding a lot of that extra weight in the past when I was making the 65 inch bales I never did make 70 inch bales because I, I thought that was too hard on the baler I mean yeah just because it's designed to do it I'm not crazy about it um, so going up to 65 inch bales I'm hoping my intentions are to go from the 1200 to 1250 pound bales that I was averaging all year last year because I set it at 60 and that's just where I ran for the rest of the year uh, my plan is to go to 65 inches make some heavier bales 1300 to 1400 pounds ideally closer to 14 my limit is 1500 pounds the reason I say that is because the place I sell to they can't move anything above 1500 pounds easily with the equipment that they have to use so I don't want to limit my potential buyer or my ability to sell my hay um, by making a bunch of bales that people are going to struggle to move so I mean I'm trying to conform to what the buyer wants I mean four foot bales the four by sixes and everything I know people tend to like that more of your hobby or far, hobby farmers and whatnot but for feed for cattle country and largely just because I don't want to run the risk of having you know I'm already looking at two to three hundred bales just in my first cutting off the valley because my intentions are to make that all at once as long as we get a weather window and um, I don't want to have like 500 four by fives or four by sixes and that made more trips up the road trying to haul them i'm trying to be as efficient as possible and by making 65 inch bales instead of making the what did i have 300 300 280 somewhere in there uh, bales for first cut last year altogether um, maybe closer to 200 heavier bales but still getting a similar price maybe better price uh, than i was getting last year but you still got to have the the feed quality and everything else all right, I gotta go. I'll catch you. Those of you that do one. not like hay updates down the valley, this is the video for you. Now, this is the field ground that has been no tilled, interseeded with grass last year. I considered that a pretty solid disappointment. And I had a lot of bare spots. It was lighter here earlier this spring. And what I'm looking at. Granted, this is the lower end of the field. You get that much farther, then you start looking at that red clay. And it's June 1st. And, ooh, spider. We'll do it over here. You can see, ooh, another spider. You know what? Let's uh, forget that spot altogether. We're going to go over here. I mean, it's grass. I don't like seeing areas where I can do this. I mean, there's like, you know, a pound or two of grass here that could have grown in, you know? And as far as maturity goes, being the 1st of June, we have 12 acres down on the ground. Um, dog being a dog. We have basically all, well, by the time we go through and make all Dad's and Ryan's stuff, I will get greedy if it comes right down to it. And I want to get Dad's and Ryan's feed made up as best as possible. And I want this stuff made as absolutely best as possible. It is still in the process of heading out it's not it's not anywhere close well i won't say anywhere close but the majority of it has headed out but as far as being fully mature we're not quite there yet they're calling for rain essentially for the next week that's right week chances of 30 to 40 percent doesn't sound like a lot generally we miss those but i've seen an awful lot of 10 percent chances of rain become very wet so the plan is the dreaded p word huh yeah yeah bugs um gonna come down here and hit this farm with both barrels lob it all down hit it as best i can and then we're gonna come down with both balers and roll it up and if it becomes an issue which down here the fields are open this is like the best this is the best farm for that rhino rake uh pulling in 28 plus feet at a crack up through here you can do that just fine down there third cut on the bottom in that reed canary when it is maintained properly i mean nitrogen and taking care of the weeds and hitting it with radiate 
even last year if you go and look at the video i'll try to post at the end of this um or tag it um third cut uh september hay from the valley ryan could still only open the rhino rake up like half of the way three quarters of the way 